In this session, I'd like to speak to you about risk statements. Our purpose is to identify, analyze, and compare risks. And risk statements are a useful tool in helping us achieve that end. And how the risk statement is set up, it's if this particular event occurs by such and such a date, it will have a particular impact on the build. It will have this impact on cost or quality. So the items that you need in it is the event itself, identify the risk. You need to identify the date. It will happen by a specific date within the project life cycle, of course. And you need to identify the particular impact, quantify that particular impact. Now, one other item, what is the probability that this will actually occur? And that's not in the risk statement. Add that to the risk statement. Look at the probability and impact together, and that gives you the priority. What should we be doing about this risk? Is it something that we need to look at today, or is it something that we can set aside and just monitor? Let me give you an example of a risk statement. Low quality IFCs issued prior to construction result in many questions, RFIs, and delays to the project. Low quality IFCs is the event itself. When issued prior to construction, the impact is numerous RFIs and delays to the actual project. Now, the next thing I have to do is assign to it a probability. If this has happened with this particular architect's general contractor's team before, we can assign a higher probability to it happening again. We believe that it's unlikely to happen, something like 30, 40%, 20%. Assign a probability to it in the range. And finally, quantify the impact. What kind of an impact is this going to have and how can we measure it? Is it a delay or is it a dollar cost figure? So that's basically the structure of the risk statement. I've got the event, the date, the impact, probability, and then I attempt to quantify the impact a little bit further. And that information gives me the opportunity to rank this particular risk if it's a serious concern and determine whether I need to deal with it right away. You can do this with an Excel spreadsheet. You can do this with a Word document. You can do it using software out there that allows you to develop it a little bit more fully, create easy to read reports, and also track information such as ownership of the problem. Because I like to minimize the amount of administrative work that I have to do, the amount of tracking, I like to use software such as RiskMP, this particular software that I'm showing you, views of the different reports here. It produces the reports very nicely, it tracks the last updates, and it leads you through the whole process of creating the risk statement. So it minimizes the effort that you have to have, and it's quite inexpensive, so a very useful tool to have on hand. In summary, Risk statements are a useful tool for the identification and analysis of project risk. To identify risk, review the contract documents, IFCs, geotech, especially the project plan, suppliers, subcontractors, equipment availability, and of course the lessons learned. Identify risk events, dates where the risk becomes an issue, the impact on the project build, cost, or quality, and then estimate a probability that the risk will occur. Create a table of these risks and review and monitor this table of risks at each project management meeting. Thank you very much for your time and attention, and I look forward to our next session on risk management.